ACRs, VECTA-2. Whether lost in the vast expanse of ocean or dense coverage of wilderness, a person in distress can be difficult to find. Without the ability to locate someone rapidly, their survival could be at stake. Day or night, time is of the essence in finding a person in distress. ACR's VECTA-2 Direction Finder can provide a critical link in daylight or darkness, on land or at sea. The VECTA-2 is a handheld radio direction finder that will locate beacons transmitting on the 121.5 MHz international distress frequency. The VECTA-2 comes with a test locator beacon that transmits on the 121.775 MHz so that you can practice using the system and be ready when an emergency happens. This beacon is not set to the distress frequency, but another that is only used for training. The beacon that comes with the VECTA-2 should never be used except for practice exercises. By understanding how the VECTA-2 and the beacon's signal work, you'll more quickly learn how to operate it. The beacon's signal consists of a field of radiation that is shaped like a donut. While the signal travels directly away from the beacon in all directions, it can reflect off or be affected by variations in topography. The VECTA-2's Mini Yagi Antenna Array is most sensitive in front of the VECTA-2. As the VECTA-2 is aimed toward the beacon, and the more closely the antennas are polarized or aligned in the same plane, the stronger the reading will be on the unit's LED display. This is how you determine signal strength and direction to your objective. As a practice exercise, have someone take the training beacon about a mile away from you and turn it on. Choose a relatively flat area to work in. To simulate a realistic situation, it's best not to know where they are. Turn the VECTA-2 on and unfold the antenna panels. Select channel 2, the training channel. There's a numeric scale to either side of the VECTA-2's LED display. The one on the left is called the macro scale. Its numbers increase in value increments of 16. Press the macro button and an LED at the bottom of the scale markings will light. The macro setting is used to begin a search. There's a direct relationship between the two scales. Each zoom scale increment represents a relative value of 1. 16 units on the zoom scale equal 1 unit on the macro scale. The macro and zoom scales are used in combination to define a signal's strength. Set the VECTA-2 to macro and hold it at arm's length so the antenna panels are perpendicular to the ground. Begin turning in a complete circle. To minimize the possibility of signal error, always make two complete circles each time you scan. Take your time. Give the VECTA-2 a chance to respond to signal changes. Always hold the VECTA-2 in exactly the same position as you scan. Changing the position of your body relative to the antenna can give a false reading. Watch the LED display. The lights will move up the scale as the signal strength increases. When they reach a high point, the antenna is facing the direction of the beacon's signal. As you continue to turn, they'll move back down. The higher the reading on the scale, the closer you are to your objective. Adjust the volume to compensate for ambient noise. You may be able to hear weak signals better when using the headphones. If you are getting a strong reading over a wide arc, switch to the zoom scale to find the center point of the signal strength. In searching open water or land areas, normally the only signal you will receive is that coming directly from the beacon. However, terrain features and large objects can create multiple signal paths from reflected signals. These will display as more than one signal peak while you are making a scan circle. You will need to make a decision as to which one to follow and eliminate others that may be caused by a secondary signal path. Look around for things that may reflect the beacon's transmission. If you are uncertain which signal to follow, then switch to the zoom scale and follow one for a short distance. If it starts to drop, you'll know it's not the way to go. You may also get two reasonably strong signals 180 degrees apart. Switch to the zoom scale and check for differences in signal strength. When choosing a direction to go, pick a spot in the distance as a landmark and move straight towards it. Periodically, stop along the way and continue to scan the entire horizon so you can verify you're on the right track. Remember to always circle at least twice to minimize the chance of being drawn off course by false readings. As you get closer to your objective, the peak reading on the LED scale will continue to increase. When it reaches the top of the scale, start looking around for signs of your objective.
If you're receiving very strong signals and still haven't found your objective, an alternative scan method is to close the Vecta 2's antenna panels and hold the unit close to your body. This minimizes reflected signals. Only the strongest signal path will show a peak reading. If it appears you've passed your objective, go back half the distance from where you last took a successful circle scan. Then branch out along a perpendicular line in each direction. Practice makes perfect. It's the best way to ensure you'll be able to use the Vecta 2 most effectively when there's an emergency. It's very important to trust your equipment. Don't try to second guess the Vecta 2. Finding a beacon is largely a process of elimination. You need to exhaust all the possibilities. Another point to consider. Don't assume the beacon antenna will be standing straight up. If you don't get a good reading with the antenna panels perpendicular to the ground, do a full scan by holding them parallel, then at an angle. In an actual emergency, the search area to be covered may likely be larger than what you've practiced. You may not receive a signal when you arrive at the search coordinates. To be most effective, divide the area into a grid and begin a coordinated sweep. Methodically move through it, periodically stopping and taking two circular scans with the Vecta 2. With the Vecta 2's omnidirectional whip antenna, the unit can be kept on at all times in your boat or vehicle, constantly monitoring for a beacon signal. Then, if a beacon is activated nearby, you're immediately alerted and the search can begin quickly. Day or night, the Vecta 2 can be an invaluable search and rescue tool. Dive in fish boats, offshore racers and cruisers, as well as hunters, mountaineers, and other outdoor enthusiasts can all benefit if someone is separated from the rest of the group. The Vecta 2 can also come to the rescue in non-emergency situations. At airports, for example, when an ELT is accidentally set off by a hard landing, or in marinas where an EPIRB is unintentionally activated, take the time now to know your equipment and how to use it effectively before you need it in an emergency. It will save time later, and possibly lives. Be certain everyone in your party knows how, when, and why to use a beacon. And most importantly, activate responsibly. Only in life-threatening situations when you are in imminent danger.